Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to paint an imperial lily. This channel is all about learning how to paint botanicals and watercolors. Welcome back to my channel, guys. Today we are going to be painting a crown imperial lily, which is a member of the Fritillaria family. I love these flowers and they signal the beginnings of spring to me. And I thought I would show you how I approach painting one with my three-step painting method. So if you would like to see how I do that, then keep on watching. I love all the spring flowers that are out right now, and the crown imperial lily is one of the first lilies to come up. So I thought I would capture it in a painting and show you how I did it. I'm using my three-step method for painting. That means step one is starting off with the wet and wet wash. So I wet the paper with clean water. I've already mixed up all my colors. I'm using my Munio 48 pan palette. You can check out the video um, that I made on the color palette and the review of all the colors. Um, I'll link that in the description below. And um, it's really reasonable if you're starting out painting. I think it's around 60 or $70 Canadian. So if you would like to get a bunch of colors that are really great for botanical painting, then check it out. And so I'm just looking at a few different pictures of the Imperial Lily. Um, I kind of made my own composition um, and then I'm adding in the dark parts that are at the top of the flower first. And I'm making them a little bit more subtle because you could go a little too crazy with the black and orange look um, and it could end up looking really Halloween like and garish so I'm just adding that part in subtly and I think I mixed that up with Payne's Gray and uh, Violet together to get sort of a, a dark blackish purple color and I'm just adding it in so wet paper dropping in the wet paint letting it sort of mix around and fade into um, the white area a little bit. And the trick is to just use a little bit of paint. Less is more. Start off with less. You can always then let it dry and add more after. Each time that I do add more paint, I am letting the layers completely dry. I don't show all of that on the YouTube video because it would make the video really long. You can dry those um, areas in between with a hairdryer on low to speed things up so you don't have to wait for it. And I'm definitely making sure that um, the darker areas are completely dry before I wash on the clean water again to start dropping in the orange, um, yellowish orange paint. You can see I have a few different um, mixes of orange and yellow. No flower is ever just one color, even it looks just orange. It's usually mixes of dark orange, light orange, warm, cool colors, yellowish, reddish. So try and look at the picture that you're using or the plant and really see what colors uh, or what areas are more saturated, usually areas that are um, facing upward or directly to the light are warmer in color and then areas in shadow are cooler in color. I'm going to move along and work on all the petals making sure that if I'm working right beside a petal I painted that it is again dry first. This is very important with watercolor painting. You want to make sure all your layers are completely dry. All the areas you've painted that's going to be a separate area like a separate petal are completely dry this is a common beginner's mistake to kind of rush it along or to think it's dry and start painting but it's actually still a bit damp so that's where your hair dryer comes in handy and one of the things about botanical painting is learning um, the subtleties of as the paper is drying the different things you can do so when something's not quite dry but still a tiny bit damp you can always paint in little veins that will fade and diffuse out and these are skills that come along with practice watching videos and then just practicing it yourself um, to learn how your paper and water and paints react together <music>
Now I'm just adding in step two on the flowers. That's when you do your markings and dry brushing. I'm using a double zero brush with the point right up on um, an upright angle. And I am just doing some very faint veins before I move on to step three, which is wet on dry using the wet paint and then um, using a bit of a graded wash technique to blend it out, which you can see here. I'm still using a small brush for that because these are tiny areas and one of the biggest things with this method of painting that I do is I do almost all of my painting in step one and then I'm just sort of accentuating and adding depth um, and color on um, step three so I'm wanting to leave a lot of the first layer of paint showing through uh, and that's really important to get that really nice contrast and sort of light shining through look on the flower petals. Now I'm mixing up some greens for the leaves and the first layer of the stem is dry, the flowers are dry. I've added in the little um, yellow anthers hanging down from the flowers as well. And I used some of the white in the anthers to make it more of an opaque yellow. For the greens, I am mixing up three greens as I usually do, light, medium, and dark. My favorite way to mix dark green is to use um, some kind of darker green like Undersea Green by Daniel Smith, Hooker's Green, um, uh, or Perylene Green by Windsor and Newton, and then add Payne's Grey to it. I like the Windsor and Newton Payne's Grey the best. And though I'm using the Monio palette, I am also using Undersea Green from Daniel Smith and Payne's Grey from Windsor and Newton. And I've actually just added a little dollop from the tube in the center of the palette. So I have those colors in there with the pans just so I can use them as well. And I'm just alternating between the three different tones of green. You can use whatever greens you have, as long as there's a light, dark, and medium. And again, now I'm starting back with step one. So wet and wet wash. This is the funnest part for me. And so clean water, making sure you have a nice, even, smooth covering of the paper, and then dropping in the green colors, making sure that you always leave white paper showing through on each part of your painting, because by the time you get to step three, there's going to be less white and you want that light and highlight showing through. I always exaggerate the highlights I leave um, because this is a two dimensional painting, you're going to want to have more contrast to make it look more three dimensional.
now I'm starting to add in step two on the leaves. So that's just again using my double zero brush right on an upward angle with really light pressure, making really thin lines. And these are a great way to show the contour and shape. It also fills in some of the white areas a little bit, but allowing um, more white paper to show through without there just being big blotches of white. And I'm just moving around on the entire painting and going over all the leaves with this step two before I start on step three, which is again, the wet paint on dry paper. I'm going to put um, a wet splotch of paint where I want darker shadows and contrasts, and then I'll clean out my brush and catch the edge to soften it. For step three, I am using mostly the darker green. I've mixed up more of the darker color. Um, this is the Undersea Green by Daniel Smith and Payne's Gray by Windsor and Newton. And I'm just going along with my tiny brush. I don't want to add a lot of paint because a little goes a long way once you blend it. And I'm focusing on areas that are being overlapped. They'd be in shadow um, or parts where the leaf is bent over or at the bottom or the very tip. Um, and I'm just kind of adding them in, I'm not really looking at a reference photo at this point. I kind of have a way where I just, you know, look at um, where there are overlaps and deeper parts of the painting. You could certainly look at more photos if you'd like. This is probably a skill of observation that comes along with practice. Um, and it might make my paintings look a little bit more stylized, but it's just how I like to paint. Um, I find it really tiring looking at a reference photo the entire time I'm painting, making it exactly like the picture. It's not really my goal for my botanical painting style.
And now I'm just continuing on on the lower leaves with step three. You can see I'm using quite a dark concentration of the green paint where the leaves fold over. This is a really fun part too. I like adding these bits in and you can really start to see um, your painting pop off the page. You could leave it as is and not do as much of this part, but I do find that it really creates that extra realism and contrast. Um, so the trick is to make sure as you're going along that you continue to mix up more paint so that it doesn't get dilute and that you make sure your paint stays wet enough so that it continues to be easy enough to blend out when you are making your soft graded edges. And that's pretty much it for this painting. Thank you for watching to the end and let me know in the comments below what type of flower paintings you would like to see next. Thank you so much for watching this video guys. If you liked it please give it a thumbs up and leave a comment in the comment section below. It really helps my videos trend on YouTube and gain subscribers and that allows me to make more videos for you. And if you did like the video, I post new videos every week, so subscribe to my channel. And then just hit the little bell icon beside subscribe, click all, and then you'll get a notification each time I post a new video.